Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and I know a lot of you out there have been waiting for this video. I've been waiting to do it as well. I have in front of me the UDM Pro, and this is probably one of the most highly anticipated devices from Ubiquiti that I've seen in a long time. This just came out of early access about three days ago, and I just received mine today. So what is the UDM Pro? Let's talk about that while I get this thing out of the box. So the UDM Pro is essentially an all-in-one, one U rack mount appliance uh, that combines a unified controller, an eight port switch, uh, basically has the USG and two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. Uh, it also has a, a hard drive slot so that you can run Unify Protect on this as well. And it has a strong enough processor that it is supposedly capable of doing like three gigabits or so with IPS IDS turned on, which has typically been the most sort of CPU intensive process in the Unify sort of set of software. You know, for instance, with the USG, it's typically recommended to have IPS and IDS, that's intrusion protection, intrusion detection, turned off in order to make get full bandwidth out of the device because it's just so hard hitting on the CPU. Okay, so inside the box here, we've got a littler box up top. Let's pull that out and set it aside and then let's get the Dream Machine Pro out of here. Ooh, it's actually a little bit heavier than I thought it would be. Now. The MSRP on this device is 300, wow, what great packaging. I mean, look at these like sort of custom, whoop, custom styrofoam uh, bumpers that it has. Um, the MSRP on this device is $379. Uh, however, there is a eight terabyte hard drive option, which I'm not sure if the one that I received from Ubiquiti here uh, has the eight terabyte drive or not. By the way, Ubiquiti did send this device to me for free. Uh, however, my opinions, as always, are my own. All right, let's get this thing unwrapped. Here we can see the two SFP Plus ports sticking out the front here. Woo! Beautiful. Wow, there's a lot to talk about. All right, I'm going to first see, there's a little pull tab here where the hard drive goes. I'm going to sort of pull on that. And it just got disconnected. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I do not have the eight terabyte hard drive included with my UDM Pro. So I will have to find a hard drive to put in here. I'm pretty sure I have a spare somewhere. All right, so let's hold off on this for one second. Let's check out what came in this extra little box just to get that out of the way. All right, inside the extra little box we have hardware kit, so there's all your screws and such, a power cable, rack mount ears, and the UDM Pro, uh, looks like some sort of little quick start guide or something, or it has the quick start guide QR code right here. The QR code was also on the inside of the box as we've been seeing with the Ubiquiti products lately. Oh, really nice. So here is the hardware kit. I'll try to get a close up of this as well. Uh, it has some rubberized feet, as well as all of the screws that you need, as well as some rack mounting, uh, the rack mounting stuff as well. Whoop. So I will save all of this, but uh, yeah, it does have rubber feet. So if you want to uh, desk mount this thing or just have it on, the, on your desktop, uh, you can do that as well. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit closer so that we can take a closer look at the front and back of this UDM Pro. Okay, here we go. So let's talk about the components right across the front. So starting over here, this is the 1.8 inch touchscreen. It's the same touchscreen that we have on the new uh, switch line of products, the USW switches and the Pro switches. Pull off a little screen protector here. There we go. All right, so hard drive bay next here. It clicks, so you basically push it in and then it pops open. You can pull it out. Now this will fit both a 2.5 inch and a 3.5 inch hard drive. It's pretty nice, put that back in. That of course is for Unify Protect footage. Then we have eight ports of gigabit ethernet. Now one of the complaints that I saw online, a lot of people were complaining 
as they do, uh, that these are not power over ethernet ports. And I imagine that that is how they keep the price low. Again, this thing is 379 without the hard drive. So to keep that price low, they didn't put any PoE in. They did however put two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. So over here, we have one gigabit WAN port, so RJ45 WAN port, and then we have two SFP plus ports for 10 gig fiber. One of them is a WAN SFP plus, and one of them is a LAN SFP plus. And again, I don't know how that looks in Unify, but these are specifically separated out as WAN and LAN SFP+. Plus. All right, let's take a look at the back of this thing. So this is interesting. This device f functions with the model, it's the Unify Smart Power RPS, model USP RPS. It's essentially a redundant power supply that somehow plugs into here. Now that product says coming soon, so I don't know if it's early access or what. I'm gonna have to look that up but it does have some level of power redundancy built in. I think essentially what the RPS is, is a, uh, you know, basically a backup battery or backup power that can plug into a whole bunch of different devices. So that rather than having an actual dual power supply on the back of this box, you have a standard Molex power connector over here, and then you can plug this into the, UP, uh, the USP-RPS device, and this can maintain the power if your power goes out over here for some reason. That's how I understand it. If, uh, if I'll, I'll do a little bit of research on that, and if I find out that I'm wrong, I will update the video. There's also a light and LED in the back here for whether or not the RPS is actually functioning. All right, so before we got too far into the setup, I did wanna pop the top of this UDM Pro just to see what it looks like. Uh, you can see here that I have put a hard drive into the hard drive tray. This is actually the original hard drive that came with my UCK Gen 2, the CloudKey Gen 2 Plus. And so I just, uh, I had replaced that one with a five terabyte drive. I took out the stock drive from there and put it in here because I just didn't have a three and a half inch drive. Uh, but that one should work just fine, hopefully. Here we can see the display screen is telling me that we are ready to set this thing up, which we will get to in just a second. But uh, take a look at the inside of this UDM Pro. It's pretty interesting. So. A couple things you notice right off the bat. Number one is there's a lot of space over here. And I posted this to Twitter, and that's the first thing that people were complaining about. It's like, oh my gosh, look how much space is, you know, left in this 1U chassis. But then again, like, you know, you can't really have it both ways. If they didn't make this a 1U form factor, people would have complained about it not being rack mountable. But now that it is a 1U form factor, people are complaining there's too much space in the box. But, you know... One thing that they might do eventually, notice that there's just enough space for a second hard drive tray. So maybe they'll come out with another version that has dual hard drives, and then they basically don't really have to readjust this design at all in order to do like a, you know, a RAID 1 setup on the hard drives. So maybe that's an option. But there's a couple other cool things in here. The one thing I was really impressed with is this custom airflow tray. So they've got two fans in here. They've got a fan right here, right, a uh, fan right here in front of the SFP Plus ports. I'm assuming that's on top of the CPU. And then we have another fan back here that's sort of in front of the hard drives. And I'm not sure if that's for hard drive cooling or what, but it's kind of difficult to see, but the, the, this, this custom sort of tray is like molded plastic that diverts all of the airflow uh, across the vents that are on the top of the back of the chassis. So if you, here's the case, right? So see these holes right here across the top? That's where the airflow comes out, is right out these holes. And uh, when it's, uh, so there's not really like big fan holes on the side of this thing. They kind of made it more streamlined. And so the air collects here and then is lifted up this ramp over to here, and then the air collects here, lifted up this ramp here, and then sort of out pushes out the back across the entire back of the chassis, which is kind of neat. Another thing that's cool is if you look here real closely, you can see that, that the ramp, the plastic ramp for the airflow, also has holes cut into it for these like four capacitors or whatever these things are, and I'm sure that just provides some extra cooling, I'm not sure if it's for cooling or if they actually just needed a little bit of extra space for those things to stick up out of the uh, of, of the little motherboard, the main board down there, because uh, they do stick up a little bit higher 
than the uh, the ramp here. But that's kind of a cool design. They've actually got that <laughs> dialed in pretty well. All right, but enough about the inside of this thing. Let's actually go ahead and set it up. Okay, so I'm gonna be setting this Dream Machine Pro up through the web GUI. I was originally gonna do it on my phone, and in fact, I don't know if you can see this, but it does say on my phone, new Dream Machine found in Unify. So I could set it up with the phone, but it's actually easier for video purposes to do it in a browser. So what I have here is uh, the initial step when you're setting this thing up. Uh, it already timed out, so I'm gonna hit try again, but basically I just navigated to 192.168.1.1. That's the default LAN IP address of the UDM Pro. And so I have my laptop configured in 192.168.1.x. I think I made it like 1.99 or something. And then we are now going to plug in our WAN cable. So I'm gonna say try again. And it says connecting to internet, testing for internet connection. So let's plug this in. Now my internet connection is going to be a static IP address. So I might have to go into advanced internet options. In fact, let me click on that. And we're gonna set it to static. Now I need to remember my IP address. Okay, I have that information. You can also choose WAN or WAN2 SFP, which would be the top SFP plus port right here. So we're just gonna say WAN, and then we're gonna give it our IP address, gateway, subnet mask, and some DNS server information. In most cases, or I should say most people are probably gonna have a dynamically assigned WAN IP address, in which case you would plug into the WAN port and it would automatically detect your IP settings. Uh, if you do have static though, this is the process that you need to go through. All right, so we're gonna say apply. There we go. Now it tested the internet connection successfully. And we're gonna say next. Name your Unify Dream Machine Pro. Uh, UDM Pro, we'll call it something more clever than that. All right, we'll call it Dreamweaver. And there we go, agree to the terms, next. Sign in to UI.com. All right, so now we're gonna enter in our single sign-in, our ubiquity single sign-in information. And it doesn't look like you can skip this. So you have to have internet connectivity and you have to have a ubiquity single sign-in, it looks like, uh, to set this thing up. So we're gonna say next. Oh, and it's asking me for my 2FA. Let's go ahead and pop that in. Update schedule, keeping your network up to date. Uh, provides you with the latest security, performance, and features. So how often do we want to check for updates? Uh, daily at, we'll say 3 a.m., 2 a.m. All right, next. Step four of seven, auto-optimize. We'll go ahead and say yes, and then send diagnostics and performance information. This is not gonna be in production. I typically don't turn these things on anyways. We'll just say next. Step five of seven, review. Review your configuration for your undefined. <laughs> Looks like they need to fix that. Okay, and we'll just say next, starting speed tests. Ooh, that's not very fast download. I certainly get more than 22 megabits per second. I got a 400 megabit connection. I think what I'll do is I'll eventually move this UDM over to my other desk over here, closer to the uh, uh, the firewall and the, the router and all that sort of stuff. All right. Speed tests, wow, no, that is not great download and upload results. I'm supposed to get 400 by 20, not 20 by 20. All right, so let's change that. We'll say 400 by 20. Adjust speeds to what your ISP has promised you. 400 by 20, and we'll say finish. Setting up network, configuring your devices and network settings. This may take several minutes. All right, there we go, Dreamweaver. Network version 5.12.59, that's new. All right, so we've got settings or users. Let's take a look at users first. So it's just my account is the only user in here. I'm an admin and there's no groups or there's a UBNT group. Okay. All right, network, here we go. All right, so security and analytics, send diagnostics and usage data to Ubiquity. Let's not do that. And then we just have Unify, right? So we're immediately into Unify. Uh, now I'm getting, there was an error saving the analytics agreement. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to UDM Pro local portal because I want to look at settings here. All right, so Dream Machine Pro, Chris Sherwood, firmware. We can see the CPU, the CPU load, CPU temperature, memory, 
storage capacity. Uh, storage 2 is not mounted. That would be my drive that I plugged in. Uh, might not get that drive till I reboot because I don't think it's a hot swappable drive. Applications, we've got, yeah, so it says, look, for protect, it says hard drive required to start this app. Uh, then we have network, which is unify, protect, which is protect, access, that's interesting. We'll have to install that at some point. And then voice or unify talk, it's called uh, beta. Access is interesting. I don't think, I know that they're doing some access control stuff in early access, but I have not touched any of the access control devices yet. And then if we click on advanced, uh, we can enable SSH to the device. We can rename it and we can change our settings, such as the uh, automatic firmware updates. You know what I'm not seeing in here is a way to gracefully shut this thing down. All right, well, no way to shut this thing down gracefully, so we're just gonna have to pull the power plug on it. God, I hate doing that though. I'll actually pull the power plug out of my power strip down here instead. Ouch. Yeah, all right, I just turned it off. So I'm gonna put the case back on. I'm gonna move it over to the other side of my office over here, and then we're gonna reconnect to it and, uh, and, and log into Unify, see what we can see. I've now moved the UDM Pro over here to the corner of my desk. And I uh, got it plugged back in. That internet problem that I was seeing where I was only getting 20 megabits down, 20 megabits up, is some sort of charter spectrum issue. I tried through the UDM. I was still getting, you know, maybe maximum like 80 megabits per second. Uh, I took my computer out. I plugged it directly into the modem and gave myself a static WAN IP address on my computer. And I was still getting those slow speeds. So it's just something I got to call charter about. I will deal with that on Monday, as long as it's up and you know, kind of working, I'm okay with it. But I'm supposed to be getting 400 megabits and 20 megabits is not helping me to test the capabilities of this UDM. But all of that aside, let's take a look. We are back in the interface here and I'm gonna install some of the ancillary applications that come along with the uh, UDM. So if I click on settings, the first thing we see here is that my second hard drive is now recognized. So it's just a one terabyte hard drive, but it's good enough for our testing. And uh, just plugging it in and rebooting the UDM was enough to recognize that hard drive. Now we're gonna click on applications and we now have the ability to install protect since it now detects that there's a hard drive, protect is allowed to be installed. So we're gonna go ahead and install protect. And since we're testing this thing out, we're also going to install access and talk. We're just gonna install everything and I will come back when that stuff has been installed. Now we have all of the applications installed. Here's Unify, Unify Protect, Access, and Talk. So I really don't know anything about Access or Talk, but let's go ahead and click on it and see what we get. All right, step one of four, Unify Access Setup. What's your building name? All right, let's try this. Home Office. No elements found. Now is a good time to connect elements to your network for configuration. Well, I don't have any. Let's go ahead and skip. Set up access schedule. Okay, nine to five it looks like, something like that, Monday through Friday. Review configuration, all right, finish. Preparing Unify access, okay. Oh wow, look at this. So this must be events down the uh, left-hand side here. We've got uh, total activities, add users, add visitors, add NFC cards. And so we've got dashboard, users, wow, locations, visitors, all visitors, visitor log, upcoming visitors, uh, elements must be the, uh, the various, you know, uh, door control, uh, you know, uh, access control stuff and uh, badge scanners and whatnot, policies. All right, so this allows you to sort of lock down probably which users can access which doors and whatnot, and then events. Wow, that's crazy. So this is, uh, this is all new to me. Like I said, I, uh, I've worked with access control systems before, but certainly not Unify Access. And so it'll be interesting to see what comes of this. I don't even recall if there's any access stuff in the early access store. I'm gonna have to go check that out. Uh, but hopefully uh, I will get my hands on some of this equipment at some point and I can do a full review on Unify Access. Now, with the UDM, you have the ability to switch between applications up here in the upper right-hand corner. So I can click this and I can switch, for instance, over to uh, Unify Talk. 
Uh, let's see. Thanks for using Unify Talk, Ubiquity's enterprise VoIP solution. This process will guide you through your setup. Agree to the terms. Uh, let's do. We'll just do the standard setup since I don't. Uh, oh, 500 user not whitelisted. Something went wrong. Try again. Okay. <laughs> well, how about advanced setup? Nope. 500, error 500, user not whitelisted. All right, so I'm not going to worry about that for now. There's some sort of error. This also is in beta, and I'm not really supposed to show beta stuff on uh, on video anyways. So we'll skip over talk for now. Uh, I will revisit talk when uh, it's a little bit more mature and hopefully out of beta at some point. All right, so let's pop back over to protect. So protect should be what we're used to. Uh, you have no cameras, add cameras. All right, um, All right, so I've got a G4 Pro camera here. Let's go ahead and uh, pop this on. Oh, I'm going to need a switch, aren't I? Yeah, I'm going to have to have a switch. Uh, all right, I'm going to have to go hook up my 24-port PoE switch uh, so that I can get this camera going. Uh, so let me go do that next. I'm going to grab a 24-port PoE switch. I'm going to plug that in, get that going uh, in Unify, and then I'll be able to plug this camera in, and we can take a look at Protect, which we shouldn't see anything new in Protect, but I'd just like to get a camera running on it anyways and then we will uh, pick the video back up once I've gotten all that done. All right, I am back and I have done a quick and dirty test lab setup. I have a 24 port switch, it's the US 24250 watt. I also have a Nano HD access point and then I also have hooked up a G4 Pro uh, camera to protect. So that is all working fine. And let's take a quick look at protect here. There we can see my G4 Pro. If I look at my live view, of course, right now it's just pointing at my ceiling, uh, but you can see that it is working fine. Now, one thing that I realized I could not find information about is how many cameras does the UDM Pro support? And I think I know the answer to that. The answer is going to be, well, it depends, right? It has a stronger processor than the CloudKey Gen 2 Plus, which supports up to 20 cameras. So my guess would be that Ubiquity would specifically say it depends in terms of the number of cameras the UDM Pro supports because it depends on whether you're using Unify Talk and how heavily you're using it. Are you using Unify Access and how heavily are you using it? Are you using uh, standard Unify, the Unify Network app, and how heavily are you using it, right? So those things all take away CPU from Protect. So if you had just Unify with a few devices and protect running, you could have a ton more cameras than if you had a lot of devices in Unify, a lot of devices in Access that's running all the time, people are coming in and out of your doors, and you're running your whole phone system off this thing too, right? So that's what I mean by it depends. I don't have any hard and fast data on like a specific upper number of cameras, but what I would assume is that it's at least going to be as many as they say the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus can support, which is 20, right? So I would guess that 20 is probably the, the maximum minimum number of cameras, if that makes any sense. Anyways, uh, all right, so I wanted to do one other thing before I really unload my thoughts on the UDM Pro. I've had some time to play with this thing. There's a lot to unpack here, and there's some things that I think are going to have to wait for other videos as well. Like, for instance, the whole threat management is more about Unify. So it, it, it's included in the UDM Pro, but it's more of a Unify feature rather than something specific to the UDM Pro. So I am going to talk about the threat management, the IPS, IDS stuff. But first, I want to talk about the touchscreen. So let's take the camera. Let's focus in on the touchscreen so that I can show you the capabilities of this little 1.3 inch touchscreen on the UDM Pro. Okay, so here's the UDM Pro touchscreen. We can see that we have network, Protect, uh, access is grayed out since I don't have any access devices. Talk is grayed out since I don't have any Unify Talk devices. And then we have settings and about. So let's go through these real quickly. Under network, we can see our throughput, our Wi-Fi experience, uh, number of clients, wired, wireless, and guest clients. Then we have our Unify network version, 5.12.59. Swipe up to get back to the main menu. Then we come over here to Unify Protect. Let's look at those statistics. Uh, again, motion events. I'm not sure how useful this is, but there you can see motion events for your Protect cameras. We've got the number of cameras online and offline. 
and our Unify Protect version. Swipe back up. Uh, access we can't do anything with. It's grayed out since uh, we don't have any of those devices. Same with Talk. Let's take a look at settings here. This is settings for this display screen for the most part. Uh, brightness of the display screen, background color of the display screen, and then we have our fan speed, which we can actually adjust the fan speed. Right now it's set to auto and we have it at 49% with about 2800 RPMs it looks like. Back to brightness. And then finally we have about, which is gonna show us our system CPU and memory utilization as well as a graph of CPU and memory utilization over time. We have our WAN IP and our LAN IP. Temperature, 38 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Uptime, two days, 22 minutes. And then the board revision, MAC address. I'm not sure what MAC address that is since there's so many interfaces on here. Maybe it's the, I'm guessing it's the WAN MAC address. I don't know. And then finally we have uh, UDM Pro software version. So flip back up, we go back to the main screen. Uh, yep, so that's it for the touch screen. So there is just so much to unpack with this thing. There's a lot to discuss. And it's tough to, I, I tried to organize a lot of my thoughts about the UDM Pro. Uh, and I'm just going to sort of barrel through a lot of these different topics that I'm sure will come up and have already come up as I've been discussing the UDM Pro on Twitter and whatnot. So the first thing that I want to discuss are some of the differences when you get a UDM, either the Dream Machine, the standard one, or the Dream Machine Pro that I'm reviewing here. What are the differences from standard Unify? And I'm talking about the Unify Network Controller. Uh, first of all, there is no multi-site. So these are designed to be single site devices, right? So I have a Unify controller in the cloud. It's hosted on DigitalOcean and I've got a ton of different sites for different customers that I service in that DigitalOcean controller. It's like a single pane of glass, uh, you know, for all of my customers and I can easily switch between them. You can connect the UDM Pro out to unify.ui.com so that you can administer it from wherever and you can administer a ton of different UDMs from that online central interface. But within Unify itself, with the Dream Machines, you only get one site. So you can't add multiple sites with the Unify in the Dream Machine. There also doesn't appear to be a way to have a local Unify login. You have to use your Ubiquity single sign-on login. That being said, I don't know if you can even log into the UDM uh, or the UDM Pro if you don't have your internet connection working. So for me, for instance, I have two-factor authentication enabled, uh, and I should actually try this, uh, is disconnect the UDM from the WAN and try to log in and see if I can even log in. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna try that right now. All right, so you can see here that I have disconnected from my WAN. I am completely down and request timed out to the internet. Let's log out and then let's try to log back in. So I was able to log back in. That actually did work. So that's a good thing. It did think for a while, but then I was able to log in. And the other interesting thing, and I don't know if this is because I already had a session authenticated, it did not ask me for my two-factor authentication code uh, when I did that. So let me plug the internet back in. I'm going to log back out and log back in again and then see if it asks for 2FA again. Okay, I have internet access once again. Let's close this down and sign out and sign back in. This time it asked for 2FA. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that it was able to do that. It knew that I was offline. It thought about it for a while and then it let me log in with my Ubiquity single sign-on without two-factor authentication even though uh, I was, uh, because I was not connected to the internet. Now, that of course becomes a security problem, right? Because now that we know that, or if, if a bad actor knew that, if they had the login to your Unify controller, but they did not have your two-factor authentication access, your sort of second line of defense, if they had physical access to the device, they could unplug your network connection and then log in. Uh, but it seems to me that that's a cool function that you're able to log in locally without 2FA, but also possibly a security risk. But then again, a lot of people don't have two-factor authentication enabled for Unify anyways. So 
Again, keep your passwords secure no matter what. Another difference between this Dream Machine Pro and a standard Unify controller, or, or even just the standard USG or USG Pro, is that you cannot connect these to a hosted Unify controller. So let's say you wanted all of the stuff that comes in the UDM Pro, but you didn't want to use the onboard Unify controller, you want to have this thing connect out to a hosted controller, you can't do that. Now again, that may be a disadvantage to some people, but I think it just really, it really just comes down to you got to know what you're buying, right? So if the having the ability to connect out to a hosted controller is important to you, then the Dream Machine is not for you. But if that's something that you're like, so what? Who cares if you can't connect to a hosted controller? It has Unify on it. Why would you need to? then it's totally fine. Now, if I were installing a Dream Machine, if I were purposely purchasing a Dream Machine for my own uh, home or my small business, I would use the onboard Unify controller anyways. I don't see a need, since it has Unify built in, I don't see a need to connect it out to a hosted controller, but I do want to be complete in the information that I am relaying to uh, my YouTube audience. Okay, so this is the same across all of the sort of Unify line of firewalls. I double checked the Dream Machine cannot have multiple WAN IP addresses on the on the uh, on a single interface, right? So if you have a block of say five IP addresses, five static IP addresses, you can only use one with the Dream Machine Pro or the Dream Machine or any USG for that matter. I believe the USG and USG Pro, if you're daring, you can go in and modify the config.json file to add multiple IP addresses to the interface. I'm pretty sure you can do that. I never mess with JSON, so I, I always forget what you can and can't do with JSON files. By the way, don't mess with JSON files. If there's something you need to do in JSON that you can't do in Unify, you probably don't want the USG. But that brings up an interesting point. If you are able to modify the JSON file to add multiple WAN IP addresses to the WAN interface of a USG or USG Pro, you cannot do that with the Dream Machines because one difference that the Dream Machine has different from the USGs is that there is no more config.json file. There is no JSON file editing in either the Dream Machine or the Dream Machine Pro, and this has been confirmed uh, by Ubiquity. So here we can see an article posted three months ago, UDM Pro confirm no config.gateway.json allowed slash possible. Someone says, yes, you're correct. The UDM and UDM Pro are not running edge OS and thus the config.gateway.json doesn't apply. Let's talk about noise level. So I am used to having a, one of the newer version sort of fanless switches. This is the USW24. It's there's no, it's whisper quiet. There's no fan in this switch whatsoever. Prior to that, I had the US 24, uh, 250 watt, which had noisy fans, but I replaced those fans with Noctua fans, and then it was whisper quiet also. The UDM Pro is not whisper quiet, okay? I notice, I can hear it all day long, and I took a measurement, and it's running between about 46 to 48 dB, just when it's idling, right? So in the fans, as we saw when I was going through the touchscreen, the fans are running at about 50%. There are two fans inside the box. Could you potentially replace those fans with quieter fans, such as the Noctua fan replacement I did on the US24 250 watt? Probably. Uh, I have not tried that. I'm not going to try that. And if you're in a quiet office environment like I am, I'm in my home office and I have it sitting right next to me, I hear them all day, but if you're going to put this UDM Pro in a, you know, a network closet or if it's in a, a network rack in a data center, something like that, you're, ne you're never going to notice, right? 48, 46 to 48 dB is much quieter than most like fan-powered switches and servers out there. If you put this next to any like 1U server, like a Dell server or something, this is gonna be significantly quieter than that Dell server. So while it does have some fan noise, it's really not that big a deal unless you're used to having no noise whatsoever. Like if you have this on your nightstand next to your bed where you're sleeping, you're gonna notice it, right? But if it's sitting next to a bunch of other servers, it's not gonna make any difference to you.
Let's talk for a moment about hard drive compatibility. The hard drive that I put into the UDM Pro was, I believe it's a Toshiba 2.5 inch, one terabyte drive that came with my Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. That one worked perfectly fine. Uh, the UDM Pro recognized it, it mounted perfectly fine, it plugs in perfectly fine. Uh, however, not all hard drives will work in the UDM Pro. Uh, Ubiquity has a hard drive compatibility uh, article, and you can see the recommended hard drives here. Uh, in the eight terabyte flavor, right, you can go up to this uh, 14 terabyte Seagate Skyhawk, but I'm only gonna talk about eight terabyte because that's the one that you can additionally buy from Ubiquity. They have the Seagate Skyhawk eight terabyte 7200 RPM drive, and they have the Western Digital Purple 8 terabyte 7200 RPM drive. So the Western Digital Purple has a 5400 RPM and a 7200 RPM. Now, this is actually pretty interesting. Earlier at the beginning of this video, I said that you can buy the Dream Machine without a hard drive, or you can buy the Dream Machine with the hard drive pre-installed from Ubiquity. And Ubiquity doesn't tell you what kind of hard drive they install. Uh, if we look at the pricing page here, this has been updated now because they must have gotten more in stock. They didn't have a price on this earlier. Now it says hard drive eight terabyte. It's a $190 option to add a 7,200 RPM, uh, eight terabyte surveillance class drive. The only surveillance class drives that I'm aware of on this hardware compatibility list, specific surveillance drives are this Western Dig Purple, eight terabyte, 7,200 RPM, and the Seagate Skyhawk 8 terabyte 7200 RPM. I'm not sure if the drive that Ubiquity installs is one of these models or not. They don't specifically say what the model is, but both of these models, if you look on Amazon, are about $233. Or the Seagate Skyhawk is $233. Let's see what the purple is. The purple is 223. Okay, so $223 for the 7200 RPM purple drive, eight terabyte purple drive, and $233 for the 7200 uh, RPM Seagate drive, the surveillance drive. So the one that they're putting in is $190. So if you are interested in having an eight terabyte surveillance, surveillance drive in the UDM Pro, it's a good idea just to have Ubiquity factory install it for you because you're actually gonna save some money versus the Western Dig Purple or the Seagate Skyhawk. So yeah, a little bit of uh, interesting information there. I don't know if maybe it is actually one of those drives that I mentioned and they just buy so many of them that they get them at a discount and they're just tossing them in at their cost or something like that. I really don't know, but uh, if you guys know which eight terabyte hard drive, what's the model of hard drive that actually comes in the UDM Pro, Put that down in the comments below because I want to know. I'd be curious to see uh, what drive they're actually including uh, with this device. So now let's take a look at the data sheet because I want to cover a couple of things here. This is the PDF data sheet for the UDM Pro. And there are some features that are listed on this data sheet where some of the features are specific to the UDM Pro and some of the features are just Unify features, right? They're features that you get with any Unify installation. So it's interesting to sort of pick apart which of these features in the data sheet are specific to the Dream Machine and which are specific just to Unify. And so I wanted to talk about the redundancy section here. So this is on the second page of the data sheet. And it says the UDM Pro supports multiple redundancy options to ensure your network remains operational. Dual WAN with failover is the first one that they mentioned. So supports dual internet slash ISP connections with failover. If the primary WAN connection drops, it will automatically switch to other WAN connections. I have tested this. If you look here, I have a WAN uh, RJ45 plug plugged into the WAN port, the sort of WAN one, if you will, it's just called WAN and then WAN two. So my WAN port is an actual WAN IP address. And then this fiber cable right here is plugged into the 10 gig SFP, connected over to my USW24 switch. So basically my WAN2 is just pulling a LAN IP address from my actual regular network. So I am simulating a dual WAN failover and it does actually work. So let's go ahead and simulate that now. 
So we can see here that I am pinging out to the internet. If I say, what is my IP? Uh, the IP address that I'm getting, I'm obviously not gonna show you guys my WAN IP address, but my WAN IP is showing the one that I have specifically assigned to the RJ45 interface of the UDM Pro. Now I'm going to unplug that cable now and watch the pings here. All right, so I disconnected my WAN and now we're gonna get some request times out and then I should start getting uh, replies once again. There we go. So it took about 10 seconds and after about 10 seconds, I started getting replies again. So the WAN has now failed over and if I refresh whatismyip.com, I am now getting the WAN IP address for my edge router because I am now the, the secondary WAN, the fiber SFP WAN in the UDM Pro is just going into my standard LAN network, which means it's going out my standard LAN WAN IP address. So that's cool. It's great that it fails over, but one thing that you have to keep in mind is that with Unify, there's automatic failover to a secondary WAN. There is no WAN load balancing. Okay, so you cannot utilize two WAN connections simultaneously, which again, I just want to give you guys all of the information. Maybe that's important to you. Maybe it's only important to you that you have WAN failover in the event that your primary internet connection goes out. Now, what happens when I plug my primary internet connection back in? All right, so I've plugged my primary internet connection back in and I'm gonna wait about the same amount of time. Let's wait, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, it looks like I got one request timed out and then we are back to pinging again. That should have been the USG failing back to my primary now that it has detected that it's back up. So let's see what is myipaddress.com. And sure enough, I am now back on my primary WAN IP address. So that's pretty cool. So not only is it automatic failover, it's also a pretty quick automatic fail back when your internet resumes. Looking at this data sheet again, the second redundancy says LTE failover redundancy. Uh, supports the Unify LTE device for automatic failover to the UN LTE cellular network. Now, I don't have one of these devices to test with, but this is what they're talking about, the U-LTE-US device. And this is an LTE failover, but this is not a dream machine thing. This is a Unify thing. So if you have the Unify LTE, you can use that with any Unify installation. Uh, it's not, well, I think you have to probably have the USG, but regardless, it's a device that detects when the internet's down and fails over to LTE as a secondary WAN connection. Uh, and then, you know, Ubiquiti charges you 15 bucks a month for the first one gigabyte of throughput or, or of bandwidth, and then $10 per gigabyte after the first gigabyte. Uh, and that's done on the AT&T uh, AT LTE network. So yeah, that's a Unify thing though. So this is in the data sheet for the Dream Machine, but it's not a Dream Machine thing, it's just a Unify thing. Then we have the power supply redundancy and failover. And it says the UDM Pro supports our PSU failover system. So this is a kind of a Dream Machine thing because not all devices have that uh, Unify USP RPS interface on the back. In fact, this is the first device that I've seen that actually does have that interface. I think the other ones that do have it are the Pro line of switches. Let me look that up. So here's the data sheet for the US Pro 24. And yes, so the US Pro 24 does work with the USP RPS. Unify Pro PoE switch supports an external DC input interface, the proprietary USP RPS interface as a redundant power feature. You can use the UPS RPS with their Pro line of equipment, including the UDM Pro. Again, not um, it, it is a UDM Pro thing, but it's sort of it's sort of the Pro line of Ubiquiti gear thing. It's not necessarily specific to the uh, UDM Pro, though it does have that capability, that sort of proprietary interface that allows it to connect to that UPS RPS or USP RPS, whatever it's called, uh, which is not out yet, right? So that's something that they haven't even released out of early access yet. Scrolling down through the data sheet for the Dream Machine Pro, we also see some, um, some stuff about the threat management, which again, is not necessarily specific to the UDM Pro, although there are some 
aspects of the threat management or, or sort of the threat management suite of, of features within Unify that are specific to the UDM. So for instance, the DNS filtering aspect is only a dream machine thing. Uh, so, but let's take a look at threat management. Now, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go too deep into the threat management because it's it almost warrants its own separate video, right? So, the threat management stuff in Unify is relatively new, uh, but let's go through it a little bit here. So, I'm in Unify, and if you click on this threat management, sort of the shield icon here, this is what I'm talking about. So, within threat management you have the ability to block certain countries. So like for instance, I have Russia blocked, right? I clicked on Russia, it blocked Russia. If I wanna uh, block, you know, uh, say India, I can click on India and also block India like so. So that allows you to do geo IP filtering very easily and block out threats from specific uh, countries. We can see here that as I've had this running, the threats that have come into my device are 52 total threats. They're medium threats. And by the way, I have IPS cranked at the maximum level. Okay, I wanted to do some testing on the intrusion prevention. Uh, and so I have it cranked all the way up. I will show you that in just a second. But we can see here that I have the top threats by um, geography. So Finland is hitting me really hard right now for some reason. Thanks a lot, Finland. Followed by Denmark. I thought I had friends in Denmark. I don't know why you're trying to hack me. Uh, and then the Czech Republic. And then the top threats we have are Spam House, Compromised, and CI Army. In this same threat management interface, we can see our traffic log. So this is the different attacks, uh, where they are coming in from and where they are trying to hit. Endpoint scans are threats that are coming from within the LAN. Uh, so basically like uh, your client endpoints, if anyone within the LAN is doing anything fishy, it should show up in the endpoint scans. And then we've got the honeypot, which I don't really understand Ubiquiti's implementation of this honeypot. Again, the threat management stuff really deserves its own video. And I think if I do a separate video on just threat management, uh, I will dig a lot more into uh, these features. But let's take a look at the threat management settings uh, in Unify. So we go settings, internet security, and then here we have threat management. And you can see here that I have the threat management capped at level five, maximum threat detection settings. The reason that I did that is because I wanted to test throughput. Uh, Ubiquity says that the throughput, it doesn't actually have a specific throughput for the Dream Machine Pro but they do have throughput for uh, IDS and IPS on the USG. It supposedly caps you down to 85 megabits per second if you have intrusion prevention turned on on the USG, 250 megabits per second for intrusion prevention on the USG Pro, and then one gigabit per second for intrusion detection on the USG XG. Uh, enabling smart queues or DPI on top of I IPS will also incur a further throughput penalty. So if you have smart queues on, if you have DPI on, if you have intrusion prevention on, you're just really like limiting the amount of total bandwidth for those USG devices. However, Unified Dream Machine throughput is 850 megabits per second. That's the Dream Machine, okay? This one, the R2 Dream 2, right? Uh, this is, again... I would expect that the Dream Machine Pro, which has a better CPU than this guy, uh, has a higher throughput than 850 megabits per second when intrusion prevention, DPI, smart queues, etc., are turned on. But just to prove a point, I have intrusion, prote uh, intrusion prevention set at the maximum level. I also have DPI on. So DPI, there we go. Uh, DPI is turned on. And I don't remember, I don't think I have smart queues turned on, but I also am, I just, I don't have a lot of devices. It's basically just my computer and a couple of pieces of network equipment are the only thing on this network at the moment. So I don't, re, I don't think I have smart queues on. Uh, but let's take, go back to threat management here. And I just want to run a speed test to show you guys that I'm at least getting full throughput on my 400 by 20 charter spectrum cable connection with DPI and threat management turned on and enabled. All right, so here goes the speed test. And there we go. So we can see that I was able to get 454 by 22 with all of that stuff enabled. So 
it doesn't seem that there's a bottleneck for the intrusion prevention with this device, at least not for the speed of internet that I have. If you have a gigabit or greater connection and you have a UDM Pro, send me your speed test results because I want to see if there is some sort of upper limit, uh, you know, 850 megabits or higher uh, for threat management and everything just maxed out on the UDM Pro. Uh, I don't think there should be, but also it might depend on, for instance, if you've got 30 cameras hooked up to it and 10 VoIP phones and a full access control system, that's all gonna be hammering on the CPU. So the amount of bandwidth that is sort of hampered by the threat management might vary on the UDM Pro based on what else you have or what else you're utilizing in the UDM Pro. Again. I'd love to hear about your experiences with that. Put that down in the comments below. So we also have GOIP filtering. Uh, I have that enabled. That's where you get the map and you can click and you can block out certain countries. DNS filters. Uh, apply DNS filters to your network and block malicious phishing adult sites on, uh, malicious uh, phishing and adult sites on your network. So DNS filtering, again, this is an alpha feature. It says alpha. So I don't wanna talk about it too much, but you can add filters and you have security, block malicious domains, block just adult and pornographic stuff, or set your network up as a quote unquote family network, which says blocks VPNs, explicit, pornographic, and malicious domains. Uh, search engines and YouTube are both set to safe mode. Okay, so I think that this DNS filtering it's in alpha, it has a long way to go. There needs to be a lot more customization of the DNS filter uh, before I think it's really super usable. Uh, but I'm glad to see that they're starting to implement this kind of stuff. I think that's great for sort of an overall or all-inclusive solution with the Dream Machine and Dream Machine Pro. Deep packet inspection we already talked about, I have that turned on. Uh, network scanners, so here we have uh, auto scans endpoints connected to your network to identify potential security threats and vulnerabilities. And then we have apply honeypot to any of your networks to detect malware, uh, malware worms and other types of malicious traffic trying to scan your network for vulnerabilities. Honeypot alerts can also be found on the threat management dashboard. So I don't have either of these turned on. Let me go ahead and pop both those on and we're gonna apply those changes. Finally, if we click on advanced, we can say restrict access to malicious IP addresses, which prevents clients with IP addresses known to be malicious from accessing your networks. And then we can also turn on restrict access to Tor or to the Tor network. Uh, you can also now whitelist specific uh, IP addresses if you want to whitelist, you know, if they, you wanted to come through your filters clean without being sort of, um, you know, uh, caught up in the IPS and, and uh, malware filtering, all that sort of stuff. Again, though, that's all for a separate video. Uh, the threat management is cool. Like I said, I'm glad to see that it's coming uh, a long way, but yeah, it, I'm still right now going to be using uh, my Pi-hole DNS as my sort of threat management uh, with with my own network, but that's also because I run an edge router and not the, uh, not the Dream Machine. Though, I was thinking about it, and tell me what you guys would think about this, because I, I do like this Dream Machine Pro a lot. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing a separate video where I talk about how I migrate from my edge router and cloud key network completely over to the Dream Machine uh, and just see like what that process is and then run on the Dream Machine as my own production network with my IoT devices and my you know cell phones and tablets that we have in my household and just see the experience of owning and running a Dream Machine for a certain period of time, including threat management and intrusion prevention and all of that. If that's a video that you guys would be interested in, let me know down in the comments below. So let's summarize, right? Let's, let's, let's have a, a, a real talk about the UDM Pro. And I guess my thoughts on this device overall, and I'm a little bit torn on the device because I actually do really like the device a lot. That being said though, I'm not exactly sure who would best benefit from this, right? In terms of a home user, this thing is great, but it's also kind of overkill. For a home user, you don't necessarily need 
uh, the Unify Access stuff. You don't necessarily need the Unify Talk stuff unless you're just like me, a big Ubiquity enthusiast that like kind of just gets all the new Ubiquity stuff and likes to try it out and play with it. Y you don't really need like a voice over IP phone system and access control for your doors at home, right? So unless you're just a big Ubiquity enthusiast, I don't think this is really meant for the home market. So does that mean that it's meant for the SMB? And I say it's, I, I guess it's closer to the SMB, but my problem with recommending the Dream Machine Pro for the SMB is the lack of redundancy. Now, Ubiquity in the data sheet talks about redundancy. They talk about dual WAN failover. That's great. They talk about the ability to fail over to that LTE device. That's great. They talk about the USP RPS you know, DC power backup redundancy, sort of the dual power supply backup redundancy of this thing. That's great. But what about the device itself, All right? So imagine that you're putting all of your eggs into this basket, right? The UDM Pro basket. You've got Unify running on it. You've got your access control. You might have your voice over IP phone system running on it. You've got uh, Unify Protect, you know, surveillance for your entire uh, small office or, or medium office, right? What happens when the UDM Pro fails, right? So say five years down the road when, you know, you get to that sort of mean time to failure for any piece of hardware in a data center. What happens when the UDM Pro fails? You're, you're putting a lot of eggs in the dream machine basket there, right? And so I don't know if I would be comfortable with the dream machine Pro even if you had the USP RPS to back up your power, even if it had a second hard drive, which it doesn't, to back up your surveillance stuff, what if the main board goes out? What if your WAN port, the Ethernet port on for the WAN or the SFP Plus port goes out? You're kind of dead in the water, right? For a lot, for a big chunk of your business. And so I'm not sure if I would even necessarily recommend it uh, for a small business unless perhaps you bought two Dream Machine Pros. If you had a second one that was a spare sitting on a shelf, or if for instance, you're an MSP and you're putting Dream Machine Pros in all of your clients' businesses, but you happen to have a handful of them at your store or in your warehouse ready to go in case one of these fails, right? So that's sort of the, the, the only thing that I don't really like about it is the unease of putting all of your eggs in one basket and running all of this really important mission critical stuff on a single 1U appliance. Not that it can't be done or that it isn't done by companies all over the place. But usually it's done separately, right? Usually you might have an access control system and you only have one of those and it's a single point of failure. But if your access control goes down, your video cameras are still online, you know, your your wireless access points are still functioning, which I, of course they would still be functioning if this went down. But you get what I'm saying. This is the core of your network. I, I just, I feel like it would be more, I would personally be more comfortable having dedicated different appliances that if any one of them goes out, it's less impactful on your business than if this one device goes out. So I don't know, you guys let me know what you think down below. The two biggest complaints that I have received so far about the UDM Pro online as I've been talking about it on Twitter are first and foremost, I took pictures of the inside and I think I talked about this earlier in the video. I've been filming this video over like four days so I don't remember exactly what I've talked about and what I haven't. But the fact that the chassis is very, very empty, right? So inside the chassis, there's a lot of open space. And I, I maintain that you know Ubiquity or any hardware manufacturer just can't win, right? You've got people that are gonna complain that there's a lot of open space in a 1U chassis. And then if you made it a non-rack mountable form factor in order to save space within the device itself, you're gonna have people that complain that it's not a rack mountable 1U appliance, right? So that doesn't really bother me too much. So the people that are naysayers and saying, hey, there's too much space inside the device, let, you know, haters gonna hate, right? Let those people say what they want. The other complaint that I have received online is this device should have power over ethernet for the eight port switch, which I agree, again, it's a trade-off, right? I agree that it would have been cool to have power over ethernet, even if it was only for like four of the ports or something. 
But think of it from Ubiquiti's point of view, right? They're making this device. If they put power over Ethernet into this device, it would cost more and it would probably need additional cooling, which maybe means more fans or bigger fans, which maybe means more noise, right? So their choice is let's make this thing more expensive for the people that need power over Ethernet when not necessarily everyone needs power over Ethernet. Uh, and the trade-off is we might not sell as many of them, but we're going to sell them for a higher price versus let's not put power over Ethernet in and bring it down to a more cost-effective price point. And for the people that need power over Ethernet, they're now going to buy our switches, right? Because you're going into the whole Ubiquiti Unify infrastructure. You're probably going to buy a Unify PoE switch to go with your Dream Machine Pro, right? So in my opinion, looking at it from Ubiquiti's point of view, I feel they made the right decision by keeping the device more cost effective because A, more people are going to buy it at that price point, and B, people that need PoE will still buy a PoE switch from you anyways, right? So I don't mind that decision so much. However, there is one trade-off that I would have really liked to see in this device that I think would have justified a higher price point and it might even justify a separate device like a UDM Pro Pro, right? And that would be a second hard drive, okay? I would love to have seen a RAID 1 set of hard drives for Unify Protect in this device and it would have been worth to me probably an extra 100 bucks. Like if this had two hard drive capability, I would have paid 479 bucks for this thing instead of 379 bucks because then I would feel better about the footage that I'm getting from video surveillance being on a RAID 1 set of hard drives. I really think that, again, I understand the ability, wanting to keep the thing cost effective, but it would be really cool and not too difficult, Ubiquity, if you're listening, uh, I think to have another version of the UDM Pro with a second hard drive. Okay, so just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think about that down below. Overall, though, I really like the UDM Pro. I'm excited about it. I, I like Ubiquiti coming out with these exciting products, and I'm happy to be playing with it. I've been immersed in this UDM Pro for like three or four days now, and man, I mean, I, to the point where I'm thinking of switching my entire network over to it just to have the experience of, hey, I am a Dream Machine Pro user. I'm a Dream Machine Pro network. And so I think I'm going to try that. I'll probably make some more videos on that. I also want to perhaps do videos on that threat management that I talked about. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the Dream Machine Pro? And I don't want to hear complaints. I don't want to hear naysayers. I want to hear constructive criticism of the device if you have that. Or if you think the device is freaking awesome, let me know that down in the comments below. Also, let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you made it this far into the video, it's probably going to end up being like a 40-minute video or something. Thank you for sticking with me, and thank you for sticking with the review of the Dream Machine Pro. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, click subscribe, hit the bell icon, all of that sort of stuff that us YouTubers are supposed to say to you guys, and thank you so much for watching all the way through. Uh, comments, always welcome, put them down below. And yeah, that's about it for the Dream Machine Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one.